Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make Zeppole San Giuseppe, also known as Fingi. I've had this recipe requested for years here on Laura in the Kitchen, so I'm thrilled to share it with you. For those of you um, who are maybe unfamiliar, these are little sort of little desserts that, that are traditionally served on March 19th, which is um, St. Joseph Day in Italy, which is also um, Father's Day in Italy. And this is like the dessert that symbolizes that day. So I'm thrilled to share it with you. The only difference between mine and like the traditional, traditional kind, although now they're pretty much made more this way than the original way, is that originally you deep fry them and you can. It, the dough is exactly the same, but I'm gonna bake mine, I always have. That's how I've always eaten them, and right now, even at bakeries in, throughout Italy, you'll find them um, more baked than fried. But like I said, you can fry them if you want to, I just prefer them baked. All right, let me get started with the ingredients. I'm actually gonna start with the custard ingredients first because we need that to cool. You need whole milk, egg yolks, granulated sugar, cornstarch and all-purpose flour, a couple of strips of lemon zest, vanilla extract, and I also have a little bit of salt with the sugar. Really easy and really simple. In a saucepan, I am going to add my milk. You also need a little bit of whipped cream, but you don't need that until later. And the lemon zest. A couple strips of lemon. And what I'm going to do on medium heat is I'm just gonna bring that to a simmer. While that happens in a large bowl, I'm going to add my egg yolks along with the sugar. And I'm just gonna whisk this for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna do it by hand. You can do this um, using a handheld electric whisk, but just for a couple of minutes or until they become a little more pale in color. They look gorgeous. I'm gonna add my flour and my cornstarch. It's gonna thicken up a little bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna mix this in. My milk seems to be just about at the perfect simmering point, just maybe 30 more seconds, which gives me enough time to incorporate this, which is, this is how you want it to look, just like that. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of milk because I need to start tempering my eggs. Get that mixed in and then keep adding the milk because you really want to make sure that nothing's curdled or anything like that. So I just start with a little bit and I turn this off. Where's my mapine? Grab my kitchen towel, remove the lemon because by this point it's done its job because you want just like a little hint of lemon but you don't want like a strong overpowering lemon flavor which is why I just kind of peeled a few pieces, a couple pieces instead of zesting it in because that will give you a stronger flavor because you can't remove it obviously. And then just pour and whisk. Looks good. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour this mixture back into the pot. And this needs to cook on medium low, constantly stirring it for a few minutes or until it thickens. It doesn't take very long at all. You just wanna keep an eye on it and you wanna make sure that you stir constantly because you will start to get um, like lumps at the bottom of your of your saucepan and then what you do what you can do is you can just switch to a whisk and whisk them out but we're also going to pass it through a sieve so if there's any lumps of anything it's going to get caught by the the sieve so it's fine just give it a few minutes and cook it over medium low it won't take long at all that looks gorgeous. It's really nice and thick and it's going to start, I'm gonna actually turn it off. And it's also going to thicken more as it sits in the fridge, but you need the custard here to be really thick. Otherwise it's not going to stay on your, like a Zeppoli. I'm just gonna add a splash of vanilla extract. I always add it at the end because I don't want the flavor to cook out. You can see it's really nice and smooth. I don't even have to pass it through a sieve if I don't want to. I'm going to, just because I'm a creature of habit and I'm just used to it, but I want you to just pay attention to this really quickly. This is a really thick custard, so you're not gonna get a very, it's not gonna just ooze out. So just take a clean spatula and just swoosh it around. And before you know it, it'll come right out from the bottom. Custard looks good, I'm gonna cover it, but I'm actually gonna make sure that the 
uh, plastic is touching the custard itself because it prevents that ugly skin from forming on the top, which drives me crazy. And I'm just going to pop this into the fridge for a couple of hours or until it's cooled completely. So the ingredients you'll need to make the dough, you'll need all-purpose flour, salt, water, butter, and eggs. So it's basically the same dough as a pat of shoot, like a, a cream puff, same. But like I said, I'm going to bake mine, but you can uh, fry them if you want to. In a saucepan, I'm going to add my water along with my butter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on the stove top on medium heat and bring that to a boil. I'm just looking for the butter to melt completely. But I also have baby kicks. <laughs> what I also have going on is I have my oven preheated to 400. I have a baking sheet with some parchment paper ready, and I also have a piping bag that I have fitted with a large star tip. So that's all ready to go. I'm just going to wait for that to come to a boil, and then we'll proceed. I'm just going to turn that all the way down. You can turn it off if you want to. I'm going to add the flour and salt. And now what you need to do is it's going to look like a mess, because what happens is I'm actually going to turn off the heat until it comes together. It's, you can see how it's like splitting, but watch, watch what happens in the next few seconds. You just gotta take your one spoon, which is the best tool for this, and you just keep mixing, mixing, mixing until you can start to see that the flour is being absorbed. Well, the flour is absorbing the liquid. And then turn this back on, and just um, about medium heat and cook this while constantly stirring like I'm doing right now for about a minute or two. And all that does is it kind of gets rid of that raw flour taste, even though we're going to bake it. But just do this for about two minutes. Wonderful. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put this into the bowl of my standing mixer that I have fitted with a paddle attachment. And I am just going to mix this for a couple of minutes because what I want is for the dough to cool a bit before I start adding the eggs because the dough is so, so hot that I'm afraid if I were to add the egg right now, the eggs right now, it would cook the eggs a little bit. So by letting it mix for a couple of minutes, it cools down the mixture. So I'm just going to let that happen for two to three minutes on medium speed. All right, so now it's been about two minutes. I'm going to start adding my eggs. Now it's important that you don't add your next egg until the first one is incorporated. So it looks like it's not going to come together, but it will. You just need to give it patience. You just need to have patience. So once that's done, I'm going to add another one. And I'm going to keep doing this until all my eggs are in and my dough is done. That is what you want your dough to look like. And now what I'm going to do, oh, that's gorgeous, place that into my piping bag. So let me show you how I make my little nest. You start with in the center and then you make a circle and then you kind of go up a level. You want like two layers, if you will. I don't even know how to really describe it other than just to show you because these will puff up in the oven. So I'm just going to continue to do that. Now, if you were to fry these, this is the point where you want to have hot oil, vegetable oil, 350 degrees. You want to pipe these exactly like I'm doing them right now on pieces of parchment paper. Once you are done, you cut out little, you know, you cut out this little square, right? You have to cut it out with the parchment and then you fry two of them at a time with the parchment in the hot oil. The parchment comes right off and then you just fry them until golden brown on both sides and that's really it. I don't think that's necessary. I'm not going to. Like I said, I prefer them this way anyway, so that is what I am going to do. All right, so these are ready to go. I'm going to pop them into the oven at 400 for around 35 to 40 minutes, and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. My custard is cooled. My little shells came out of the oven and I let them cool completely. They took 40 minutes exactly. What I've done to six of them, because I'm going to fill six now, and then I will do the rest tomorrow, because I actually have people coming over tomorrow, and I want to fill these nice and fresh. All I've done is once they've cooled completely, is just slice them in half, and that is what they look like. But before we go any further, what I'm going to do to my custard, I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream that I've just whipped myself. You just want to mix it. This kind of lines up the custard a little bit. 
and it makes it not so um, heavy and dense and sweet. It just makes it a lot lighter. Okay. You don't have to go too crazy because it doesn't matter. I also have another piping bag with the same star tip that I used to form them. I'm going to put some of this cream in here. I'm just going to put about half. You just do a thin layer of custard and then just a little bit in the center like so. Now, traditionally, you need to top these with like an amarena cherry or like a spirited cherry, something like a cherry in alcohol. My grandmother always used to use brandy, the cherries that were soaked in brandy. I have a very hard time finding them, very, very hard time. So I just use maraschino cherries because I don't actually eat the cherry. So it's just kind of there for decoration. And then you have to sprinkle powdered sugar on top because that's just the way you have them in a bakery or at a festival or whatever. Now, these look adorable, but I'm telling you, it looks even better when you have all 12 of them done on a really big platter. It's awesome. It's so, so awesome. I'm gonna dig into one, but I don't wanna break that one up because it looks so pretty. I'm just gonna do one for me. Put a little lid on, put a little extra on top. I need a little powder sugar. Hold your horses, because I'm important too. And they're so cute, and they're so good. I'm just gonna go right for it. Mmm, they're so good. They're really light, like, the pastry itself is not sweet. So the only sweetness is coming on, it's coming from the custard and a little bit of powdered sugar on top, but it's really not overwhelmingly sweet. And the custard is really light as well. They're just really awesome. And like I said, if you want to, you can fry them, but I just don't think it's necessary and you lose all of that nice light. Actually, they're a lot lighter when they're baked than when they're fried, believe it or not. Go to in the kitchen.com to get the written recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you next time. Bye. Y'all are on my nerves. No, I just want to do this. I'm leaving. <laughs> I can't even bend down that far anymore. <laughs>